So when you, maybe can you talk a little bit about your education and maybe kind of what you were thinking about doing career-wise when you were in your education? Sure. Um, I have to admit that it was late in my college career when I found out that you could get paid to do mathematics which meant you could go to graduate school in mathematics. So I did that. That was my, I loved it. I mean, being paid to do math, something I loved was great. So I went to graduate school thinking about math or physics um, and chose a math program, studied geometry, really love geometry, and uh, wrote a thesis on minimal submanifolds with finite total scalar curvature. So it seems very pure, in some ways it is. On the other hand, there's a lot of optimization involved in that work. And because it was geometric, I had been using software to visualize the surfaces I was working on. So that was my background, got my PhD, got my first academic job and did that work, was teaching students who were gonna go into all kinds of endeavors and always wanting to motivate them, was trying to share examples of real world applications of mathematics. So, so I had a foot in that world at that point. Um, it wasn't until I had a postdoc type position at Stanford uh, that I was teaching pre-meds and interacting with people on campus who were doing very different types of work that I, I switched my optimization. Instead of optimizing, minimizing surface areas with, with a given boundary, I changed over to optimizing combination regimens for leukemia patients. And uh, same optimization techniques. We're pulling in Lagrangians and Hamiltonians to, to sort out all of this, uh, this analysis, but very different application. And, uh, and really opened my eyes. So not only was I doing mathematics, it was, of course, very beautiful, but now it had the potential to help people who are really sick. I mean, how wonderful is that? So, um, and I will say that that switch was due to a bit of serendipitous encounter. I was at a po party for postdocs at Stanford. I was talking about differential geometry and soap bubble geometry to a postdoc in biology. And the next week I got an email saying, hey, my professor wants to meet you. Would you come over to our lab? Of course, I was very curious and I was teaching pre-med students. So I said, yes. Um, and they proceeded to show me T cells attacking cancer cells, um, which looked like bubble soap bubbles in the pictures. <laughs> but really what they were doing was very different. So I started doing some modeling of um, leukemic cells, which, which are cancer cells of the blood. So they circulate in, in the blood system. And so we can use ordinary differential equations. We can assume there's some mixing that makes it a good approximation to that. And uh, so that's, that really took off. Um, and I, I will say in retrospect, I mean, I told them at the beginning, I said, okay, I can work on your leukemia problems part time because I'm working on some really interesting soap bubble math problems. So, you know, I'm, I've only got part of my time to help you with leukemia, but it very quickly became so interesting. So the optimization techniques I was using, I switched over to control theory techniques and, um, and was using a math software like MATLAB at the time, which we still use for these types of problems. So that was my academics. Um, went into a uh, research institute after Stanford, got recruited to be associate director of, of one of the new National Science Foundation math institutes at the time, and had a great time there for my four years, my four year term. Had some academic offers after that and was at another party uh, at Stanford. And, um, <laughs> was talking to people about my work and one of the people said, hey, we could really use people like you at my company. And so I sent her my resume and she worked at Genentech. Um, so I quickly had these offers, academic offers and an industry offer to consider at the same time where I had not planned on going into industry. Um, but I was doing this work, this disease modeling work. So I took a really big leap and I tried uh, the position at Genentech, loved it. Um, so I spent a few years there. Um, when, uh, when an opportunity came along to do more modeling, I switched over to another company, Sertara. Spent some years there, um, proceeded to go through the rest of the, um, the industries on my resume. And you can tell me how much you want to hear about that or which pieces you want to hear at this point in time. Yeah.